Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Now, as you guys can notice, I'm here in New York City, which is the Division One. And before some of you jump on me and say, "Uh oh, another Division One and Division Two comparison videos," uh, I just wanted to quickly say that this video is intended to celebrate something, and that's the design philosophy of the new Dodge City Gunslingers holster. Now, such a um, such an item, which is an exotic item currently is really powerful and it follows the design philosophy of the classified Lone Star from the Division 1. Now, I know a lot of people are, you know, very, very in tune with the way we as old Division 1 players usually reference back to the game, but it's very difficult not to do so because the Division 2 was built upon the Division 1 in terms of mechanics, in terms of story, in terms of, you know, even reputation. That is the way both games have been. And even when they released the Division 2's first set of marketing, uh, you know, awareness campaign, it was to the Division 1 community that it was it was actually announced to. So they announced it on a state of the game. And so they were trying to put out their product to the their already existing consumer base. And so that's why we feel a little bit of, you know, ownership with both games. And that's why we throw those things out there. But largely, what I wanted to just put out is just the design philosophy from the Division 1 is starting to showcase itself in the Division 2, and I think this is a step in the right direction. I think Massive needs to not be shy with implementing some of the really, really good stuff that came from the Division 1 and the Division 2. Because if you look at the classified Lone Star, its six-piece bonus, or its classifieds, from the two-piece all the way to the six-piece was actually very good. In fact, the two-piece gave you 100% ammo capacity. You got LMG damage and shotgun damage if you wanted to. You got more ammo capacity. You got more LMG damage, more shotgun damage. And then when you use the six-piece, you were able to get... Um, so this says, when a weapon has 50% of its magazine remaining in combat, there is a 75% chance to receive a bonus that activates when the final bullet is fired from the current magazine once activated. The magazine is instantly refilled. Weapon damage and rate of fire is increased by 30%. The bonus is canceled by reloading, uh, swapping weapons, or exiting combat. So this was a talent that allowed for you to have this crazy rate of fire as well as this instant reload speed when you swapped your weapon using Lone Star. So if you look here, I'm going to give you guys uh, just kind of a little... Short example. Oh, look, I got the I got the buff. Just straight up, I have this crazy rate of fire buff that has a 75% chance to, you know, to proc. But once I switch my weapon using Lone Star, by the way, I already have all my weapons reloaded. I mean, it's crazy. It's just it's just one of those things that the developers did such a good job on that if you went ahead and looked at it in a different way and said, okay, you know, what is this about? When I go back to my other weapon, that, that you know, the way it works. It's actually pretty cool. And so I'm really excited, you know, as to how this Dodge City Gunslinger holster, you know, has actually become something of, you know, a, a mechanic that the developers are bringing from the Division 1 to make their agents stronger. And I know there are probably concerns within the community about how, you know, this might be something that is, you know, super strong. But that Dodge City Gunslinger holster is actually not as strong as Lone Star. Because Lone Star gives you a 75% chance of getting that crazy rate of fire. Whereas the Gunslinger holster requires for you to swap to your sidearm and then swap to your other weapon that you're using. Whereas in the case of Lone Star, you could just swap weapons and, and it was actually a faster reload speed. And the Lone Star bonus bonuses were actually much more now granted it's a gear set and it required this amount of strength but based on the, de the design history of the developers it's been very evident that they want their player base to be really strong because one of the best things that happens is when people are playing a game and progressing especially in a game like a looter shooter they want to feel the progression and feel themselves being strengthened this is one reason a lot of the skill power community, the skill build community is very upset right now with Massive because skills don't feel strong. And so if the developers actually want to continue this trend, they need to take that same design philosophy that they had from the Division 1, where we had a lot of very strong skills, and then start to implement those things in the Division 2 and not be shy about it. Because yes... It may seem like everything is a little too strong or whatever, but in PvE, 
I don't think we have that problem. Now, PVP is where the balance, you know, will probably have to come into. If you look very, you know, if you look closely here, I have a final measure um, piece here, which, you know, it benefited from you running some skill power if you wanted to. Um, you had so many bonuses. Um, you also had the defense uh, gear set as well, which used a skill power gear set where you had to run a whole ton of skills, which somehow I've bungled. Oh, here, a whole ton of stamina. Sorry, you didn't have to have too much skill power. But then you had some other builds like Reclaimer. You had some other builds like Firecrest. And if you look at the way these other builds worked, they used a lot of skill power. And they were very, very strong. You could run a Firecrest build and you could feel the strength of your character actually coming into play and seeing yourself get stronger and seeing yourself do a lot of damage, do a lot of utility. So right now we're seeing that same design philosophy in the DPS weapon class, uh, weapon area, but we're not seeing that in the skill uh, aspects of the game. And so even though people may, you know, have some, I'll say some concerns as to some things being too strong, I think the design philosophy and the way progression is meant to be is that players are supposed to get stronger as they continue to grind. Because right now I can say for the most part, a lot of people that are playing the game are around the 200 hour, maybe in some cases, a hundred plus hour mark. If they have not necessarily, you know, stayed with the game, then they're probably less than that. And so at this point, you know, with everything that's going on, I think the developers are starting to open up and unveil some of the things that they've probably had planned for a while. This is one of the reasons that I just think, you know, the developers need to continue to stay true to their design philosophy and not necessarily be too worried about how it's going to be perceived. The only thing, though, is PVP, ha they have to explain why the mechanics have been changed. And I think I'm probably going to do a separate video for that. And I'm going to let you guys know my thoughts on the whole issue and the whole aspect. So anyways, that's all I have for today. Thank you guys very much for your time and your audience. And I guess I will see you in the next video. Thank you for very much for watching. Peace.